Good morning, everyone. Alan Schimmel, DevOps.com, DevOps TV, live here at Jenkins World from the expo floor, joined by none other than Gary Groover, DevOps guru, author, leader. Uh, and what else, Gary? <laughs> I just, a guy trying to help other people figure just out how to improve their software development delivery processes. Absolutely. But, and for those who don't know, Gary's written several great books on DevOps. Uh, the one closest, the one I like best was Leading the Transformation. Okay, yeah. Number what's two. what's the newest? Uh, starting and Scaling DevOps. Starting and Scaling DevOps is the one with the elephant with yeah, the yeah. ball on it, yeah. I remember, yes. But Gary, you you and I have interviewed, you had the pleasure of interviewing you many times. And I wanted to really focus in on our time today with what is still the biggest question we get at DevOps.com. And that is, hey, this sounds great. Right. But I don't know how to get it started. I don't know how do we how do you how do you start this DevOps transformation? Who who do I need? To, do I gotta kill someone? I mean, well, to me, I usually start at the executives and I have them break it down into as small a system as they can. Mm -hmm. And realistically, what you want to do is break it down into the smallest deployment pipeline you can get. And a deployment pipeline is code that, because it's tightly coupled, has to be developed, qualified, and deployed as a system. If you're lucky and you have a really clean architecture, that gets you down to like five to seven people and you do the Amazon thing and you put people mm -hmm. on it and it's a cultural transformation. And look at a lot of what the unicorns are doing and you can do that. Sure. What I find in a lot of large organizations though is they're more tightly coupled than that and that deployment pipeline can include 50, 100, or thousands of people that have to work together and coordinate it. But make that as small as you can because you're going to want to try to optimize that because DevOps is all about the outcomes. It's about how do you de develop and deliver code on a more frequent basis while enabling all aspects of quality and security and performance. Those and that's going to be different for different deployment pipelines. So as much as you can, make it as small as you can because small problems are easier to solve than large problems. And then once you have that deployment pipeline figured out, try to get everybody aligned about what is, how long does it take for it to flow through? What are the types of issues? There's metrics in my book that enable you to map that out specifically and capture the types of things that are causing you problems. And then go after the things that are your biggest impediments. Those may be infrastructure, those may be consistency, those may be your testing time, or it may be your testing consistency, or it may be your code. But until you've done that and figured it out, it's hard to figure out where to start. So the biggest thing I do when I go into organizations is really get them a common view of that deployment pipeline and their processes. And for a lot of companies, it's the first time they've really thought through it that way mm -hmm. and started to put that data together and that information. And I spend about a month doing pre-work with organizations. And a lot of times, by the time I get to the room, they're seeing problems that sure. they've never seen before. So the first thing I'd say is get everybody a common view and then don't do a big long plan. I get people to commit to 30 days. Right. What do you think you can get done in 30 days? And one of the reasons I do that is because what I find out is a lot of organizations, when they start what they think is the biggest problem, even after all the mapping and everything, is just the first layer of the onion. Yeah. And once you start digging in, you learn more. Well, you also, you can't boil the ocean because that's never a recipe for success. You know what, Gary, though, you said something right at the beginning. I didn't want to stop yeah. you, though. Um, and that is, well, you got to, you know, grab some executives. What level of executives, and I realize that differs depending on the size, size of, the of the organization. organization. Right. You may not need a C-level person right. in, in a bigger organization. You may just need a manager or even right. a director. Well, it, how, it, I, I, how do you get their buy-in? So if... How do you get their buy-in is you start with what are their business objectives. You don't do DevOps to do DevOps. You don't right. do Agile to do Agile. What about your software delivery processes aren't meeting your needs? Mm -hmm. Figure out what that is. And the reason I like DevOps more than some of the other things is what I find is when you force yourself to increase the frequency of build test cycles, you're forcing yourself to fix issues, fix issues that have been in your organization for years, but your organization has brute forced your way right. through it because they're not doing it very often. And so when I think of a deployment pipeline, it needs to be somebody that can look across that. Mm -hmm. What I find is grassroots efforts start and then they die after a while just because if you're going to release code and change it, you need to influence people across from you or above you and that gets hard. But if, if you get into an organization and you've got an application that can independently be developed, qualified, and deployed, 
look at the leader of app. If you've got a separate QA organization, the leader QA, and then the operations people. Get those three people to come together, map out the process with their team, and get them committed to go on a continuous improvement journey. And it's a journey. And as long as you've gone high enough up that you can get a system-wide view across it and you don't have people sub-optimizing their parts, mm -hmm. I think you've gotten to the right level for that individual deployment pipeline. No doubt. No doubt. So, Gary, we're almost out of time here. For people who maybe want to grab copies of the book or maybe they right. want to engage you, because I know I mean, one of the things you do when you're not writing is you're actively consulting yeah, yeah. large organizations. Yeah, I'm large organizations. Um, how can they find out more? Uh, GaryGruber.com. GaryGruber.com. Yeah, or send me an email at Gary at GaryGruber.com. Get it out there. Um, you know, I do execution workshops. I do executive workshops. I have people come in and do technical workshops. And it's it's really getting you started on your journey. And then I don't just do the workshop when I engage with the customer. I continue to coach them for several months because what I'm finding is it's, it's probably it's four to forget. six months down the road before they're really starting to internalize and, and get this stuff and it takes on. a while. Yeah. You're right. All right. Gary Groover, DevOps author and guru extraordinaire. Thanks for being yeah, here with us Yeah, it's great to today. see you again, Alan. Great to see you, Gary, always. Back to Idaho today? or Yeah, back to Idaho tonight. I'm going to miss the ball game You're tonight. Miss Sorry the game, about but that. I'll, I'll cheer him on for you. All right. All right. This is Alan Schimmel, DevOps.com, DevOps TV, here at Jenkins World 2017.